Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks so much, Nicola, for the introduction um, and great presentation, Sean. I just want to start by saying thank you and that I'm really honored to be able to share some of our work with you this morning. Uh, so over the next few minutes, I'll be just sort of placing things in a little bit of a context of India uh, and sharing some examples of our work, particularly focused on digital mental health interventions for adolescents and young people, and illustrating some examples of co-design uh, through a few projects that we work on. So you've probably heard in the last couple of days uh, just sort of how large the magnitude of young people and adolescents' mental health problems is. And to put this into context for India, India contains the world's largest population of young people globally uh, aged 10 to 24 years. Uh, and mental health problems are the leading health concern for uh, this group of young people. I'd like to draw your attention to uh, the news clippings on the slide, and these are just from the last few weeks uh, and months. And what you see here, and what I'm really trying to highlight, is that there are many different determinants of a young person's mental health, many particularly social and cultural factors that shape a young person's mental health, and particularly their poor mental health, and that we cannot ignore some of these root causes uh, when we think about uh, interventions for young people. In India in particular, uh, the immense pressure to perform, uh, academic stresses, bullying, which we already just heard about, and also simply not being able to love or marry the person of your choice, which is actually cited as one of the most common reasons that young people in India die by suicide. Um, and also expectations from family and society are cited as some of the most common reasons for a young person and an adolescent's poor mental health. Quite simply, a young person's mental health is not a priority. This is a sentence that was said to me a few weeks ago at a focus group discussion where a young girl, she said, in Indian society, you do not come first. And I think this sentence really helps to highlight some of the different dimensions that impact on a young person's mental health, uh, particularly things like gender, sexuality, caste, class, violence. Um, and more commonly, now we're also seeing the impact and exposure of technology and social media that have an impact on young people's mental health and well-being. In India, suicide and self-harm are the number one cause of death. Uh, and this is about 50% higher for young girls as compared with boys. Um, the latest uh, meta-analysis shows at its very, very lowest estimate that there's at least 29 million young people under the age of 18 right now struggling with mental health problems in India. And fewer than 10% of young Indians have access to any kind of formal mental health care. And this figure of 10% can be roughly generalized to most low and middle income settings. So this really helps to sort of set the tone for uh, why digital interventions might be able to help uh, play a role in tackling the enormity of this challenge. So we know that young people, and again, you've probably heard a lot about this, but young people right now are one of the most connected age groups. Uh, and we're seeing, for example, in countries like the Philippines, Tunisia, Vietnam, that young people are even 50% more connected um, to the internet than older adults. And this is really opening up many opportunities to think about overcoming some of the most common barriers that young people face in accessing care, particularly around just the lack of mental health care and mental health care professionals, not being able to access a service, whether it's for reasons of, for example, transport. And very, very importantly, still, stigma is a very big barrier to young people being able to access care and support. Just for reference, uh, there's more than 10,000 apps that are publicly downloadable on app stores that are just for depression and anxiety. And I think this just highlights that there are a lot of people who are interested in this area and that there is ongoing work on this. Over the last two decades, there's been a very rapid evolution of digital mental health interventions for young people. Just in the last 20 years, we've seen a huge evolution from pretty old school PC uh, delivered programs to much more um, modern apps, uh, wearable technologies, uh, and immersive media programs that allow for much greater functionality as well as adaptability. Uh, we're also seeing a growing number of game-based approaches, and I'll be highlighting a video game that we're working on in just a minute. Uh, that offer much more visually engaging and interactive formats for not just learning about mental health, but also improving mental health. We're also seeing that young people are accessing the internet at a much greater rate to 
uh, gain access to information about mental health as well as help seeking, that both mass media as well as social media uh, offer great opportunities to reduce stigma as well as impact behaviors in a positive way. And they also offer the opportunity to step into someone else's shoes to create environments uh, and safe spaces to engage uh, in conversations and address different mental health challenges. That being said, though, uh, I would like to highlight that this usage is not equal across uh, different groups of young people uh, in the world, particularly young people in Africa and uh, Asia, who by no means have equal access to the internet or to devices or smartphones, as well as for young girls uh, who are at least 50% less likely to access the internet or own a smartphone or a mobile device. So I'd like to share with you three examples from our work. Uh, first, around awareness building, the second on prevention and treatment, and the third on tackling stigma. The first is a program, it's a website actually called It's Okay to Talk, and this is a website that we set up about three years ago on World Health Day in 2017. The theme for World Health Day uh, that year was Depression, Let's Talk, and after quite a few years, the WHO had selected a mental health focused uh, topic for World Health Day, so it was quite a significant moment uh, that year, and we derived our inspiration for this program from there. And this website was set up as a safe space for young people to share their personal accounts and stories uh, about their mental health with the larger goal of expanding the reach and acceptability of mental health information for young people. And also to just offer a space for young people to talk about their mental health, to engage with other people's stories and to find uh, easy to access information about help seeking. Young people can submit their stories in any format of their choice. So it could be a blog that you write in, a video, a song, a piece of art, uh, anything that they would like to submit. We also run complementary social media uh, campaigns around three main themes. The first being the importance of sharing uh, personal stories and narratives. The second around debunking common myths and misconceptions around mental health. And the third around providing information on help seeking, particularly to low cost or free services. When we started out in this program, um, I'd like to show you a short video. Uh, we realized that we couldn't find a simple definition for just what mental health is broken down in a language that was easy to understand. And we definitely couldn't find one that was in a local language where we were working, which, was, uh, which is in North India. Uh, so the common language there is Hindi. Uh, so this is a short video which we wrote the script with a group of young people to just try and explain to, to others you know, how we understand mental health. मानसिक स्वास्थ्य क्या होता है हम जब मानसिक स्वास्थ्य की बात करते हैं तो मन में तनाव या खुशी या गम जैसे फीलिंग्स आते हैं या फिर डिप्रेशन और बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर जैसे मेंटल इलनेसेस के बारे में हम सोचते हैं हमारी जिंदगी में कई उतार चढ़ाव आते हैं और हम हर दिन नई प्रॉब्लम से जूझते हैं प्रॉब्लम्स जैसे फ्रेंड्स हमारे कपड़ों का मजाक उड़ाते हैं किस स्टाइल से बात करते हैं या कैसे चलते हैं प्रॉब्लम्स जिनका हमें कोई अंदाजा नहीं होता जैसे किसी फ्रेंड या फैमिली मेंबर की मृत्यु कोई बुरा या मुश्किल ब्रेकअप या किसी बुरे अपमानजनक रिश्ते में उलझना या एग्जाम्स या एंट्रेंस में फेल होना हमारे बड़े होने के साथ साथ जो जिम्मेदारियां आती है उनसे जूझना अच्छा मानसिक स्वास्थ्य या मेंटल हेल्थ हमें जिंदगी की इन छोटी और बड़ी प्रॉब्लम्स का सामना करने की ताकत देता है और फिर से जिंदगी में पूरी तरह से शामिल होने में हमारी हेल्प करता है इसके बिना जिंदगी इतनी सुंदर और उज्जवल नहीं लगती आज खराब मानसिक स्वास्थ्य युवाओं के अनहेल्दी होने का सबसे बड़ा कारण है किसी से इस बारे में बातचीत करना मदद पाने का सबसे पहला स्टेप है और जब अपने फ्रेंड या कोई फैमिली मेंबर को मदद की जरूरत हो तो उनकी बात संवेदनशीलता से सुननी चाहिए कभी कभी हम ऐसी फीलिंग से डरते हैं शर्मिंदा होते हैं लेकिन हमारा मानसिक स्वास्थ्य बहुत जरूरी है चलो इस बारे में मिलकर बात करते हैं आज तुम कैसे हो When we studied um, some of the different blogs and the stories that we were receiving on this website, there were a few themes that 
uh, emerged quite strongly. The first was that young people wanted to describe the different kinds of difficult experiences that they were having, and these were generally usually placed within a particular social context that most commonly either was uh, their family or relationships. Uh, the second theme was around different strategies for coping with mental health problems that often tended to veer more towards informal help seeking and sharing things that helped, things that didn't help. Uh, and finally, one of the most sort of overarching themes across all of the narratives was that young people quite explicitly said, I want to tell my story because I would like to break down this idea that it's not okay to talk about mental health. We also run a lot of physical sort of real world interactions and events as part of this program. And I think to just echo something that Sean said as well, young people said, hey, it's really great that you're doing all of this work online, but please continue to have a much more face-to-face -face interaction, have real conversations where people can sort of look at each other and talk with each other. And a few other things that also emerged were around using much more uh, vernacular language, so not just using English or Hindi as the main uh, mediums of conversation to make information on help seeking much more easy to understand and easily available, and also to enable young people to actually lead uh, and initiate these kinds of programs. And finally, also to evaluate the impact that these kinds of public engagement uh, efforts were having. The second uh, project that I'd like to tell you about is a game that we're building to teach young people in schools. This is focused on high school students' problem-solving skills. So this is a game called Pod Adventures. Uh, it's a smartphone game-based intervention that is paired with a non-specialist counselor. Um, and it has problem solving under the sort of broader umbrella of cognitive behavioral therapies as the core therapeutic uh, element. And it's offered to students who either have a felt need for some kind of psychological support uh, or who might be experiencing an ongoing common mental health problem. We particularly focus on students who have anxiety, depression, or conduct uh, related problems. This game has been, uh, it's still a work in progress. We've been working on this for the past uh, more than 18 months uh, with a group of about 150 young co-designers through these three phases of uh, design. The first being around uh, youth consultations where we worked with students to really understand is this something that you think is going to be useful? Um, both in terms of problem solving itself as well as the proposed means uh, a game or something that was going to be provided on a smartphone. Uh, the second being around co-design, um, so getting young people involved in actually designing the, the, how the game was going to look, the different features that it was going to have, the content, the stories um, that it would contain, and finally around user testing to make sure that students actually felt that this is something that would be useful, that's something that they might find helpful. In the last few months, we've just begun uh, a pilot feasibility study for this game, and there's just a few findings. This is just three to four months, uh, so it's very, very early findings, but that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the first being that nearly all the students who are actually enrolled in this program are completing the program, and that's quite uh, encouraging because it tends to be very hard to keep students engaged in uh, digital interventions of this kind. Uh, the second, that our results at four weeks and very recently at 12 weeks as well suggest that the intervention might be helping uh, to reduce problem perception and severity. Um, and we're also seeing that young people, whether, for example, it's a student in grade nine and a student in grade 12, they have quite different um, preferences for the kind of content, for the kind of media, the format that they would like. So it isn't necessarily the case that a student in high school who at different ends of high school is going to like the same kind of intervention. So for example, we're also seeing our younger students like an animated format, and I'll just show you a video in a moment of what the game looks like. But older students want things that are more real world. They want to see real people talking in a sort of video or social media kind of format. And the last, um, component that we're trying to work uh, very hard to understand is how much human support and what kind of human support is needed to make an intervention like this as effective as possible. So just for a bit of context as well, this particular game is part of a larger stepped care uh, intervention where sort of it's paired from least to most uh, intensive match to the students need in school. And uh, in the last couple of years, when we were piloting a face-to-face -face version of this intervention, we saw that the majority of students who were self-referring themselves actually didn't meet uh, the clinical threshold for caseness, so they weren't actually eligible for the face-to-face -face intervention that we were offering. And the feedback that we received both from students who were part of our game design team, as well as students who had been through the face-to-face -face intervention, they said, you know, this would actually be useful whether or not a student meets this uh, clinical threshold. 
And in order to sort of be responsive and flexible uh, to that need, this program was reconceptualized to be an open access intervention for any student who had a felt need for some kind of psychological uh, support. And this finding was also consistent with um, uh, evidence for problem solving as an effective treatment for uh, emotional problems as well as emerging service models for early interventions for young people's mental health. This, pro this app is also offered in a couple of different sort of language ways. So for example, we've seen students that we work with, they might read in a particular language, but they listen in another. So for instance, content may be offered in Hindi or in English, but the voiceover might be in a different local language. Uh, we've also had to design keeping in mind the infrastructural uh, realities of where we are. So for instance, everything in this app works offline, the data collection works offline as well, and keeping the option open of de-teching uh, the game. So for instance, offering this on a desktop, which is the only sort of technology that's quite freely available at uh, schools across India. This is a short video um, that will just tell you a little bit more about the game and what it does. Sport Adventures, a game to learn stress management and problem solving. Hi, I'm Nisha and I will be your friend and guide through this game to learn new and fun ways of solving your problems and managing stress. Do you think solving your life's problems can be an adventure? It can, with the exciting new things you will learn in this game. With each gameplay, you will step into the shoes of other characters and explore their worlds. Complete missions to help them solve their problems. Practice ways to feel less stressed. Relax and find your happy place. Work on your problems in simple steps. Create an action plan and track your progress. Learn, practice and master. And the last project that I'd like to tell you about is a brand new uh, project. Um, it's called Man Mela, which loosely translates to a celebration of the mind or a festival of the mind. And this is a new uh, project that's supported by the Welcome Trust. It's a public engagement uh, program that has two components. The first being to, sort of, to create a multimedia roadshow that we will be taking to public spaces in five different cities in India and creating a complementary uh, digital interactive museum for young people's mental health that will also showcase uh, different stories and narratives of mental health recovery and resilience. These are a few examples of some of the different sort of media installations uh, and interventions that will be part of this program. And um, sort of the pictures that you see on the left are just prototypes of ideas that many young people have generated through um, this early stage of co-design that we've been working on. So everything from sort of VR experiences to games, films, animation, and including more sort of traditional media formats like music, print media, uh, social media, and so on. So we've heard this a lot, and I think I just want to re-emphasize uh, and tell you a little bit about our co-design process um, to conclude. Is that, I mean, co-design is, it's not an activity and it is a process. Uh, we do this in a, a variety of different ways, um, all the way from inception uh, of a program or a research question to evaluation. Uh, and this could be done, uh, we work with youth advisory groups, we work in prototyping. So for example, the game that you just saw, it went through about 15 different iterations or builds before we arrived uh, at the version that you saw now, and even that is changing uh, at the moment uh, through theory of change workshops um, and also co-design and user testing. These are just a couple of examples of what some of our workshops look like. And also making sure that young people's stories and stories of lived experience make it all the way through, even into a sort of animated format that you saw now. So we take quite an ethnographic approach, uh, working with young people, uh, understanding their day-to-day -day lives, and making sure that these experiences are reflected in uh, the final content and the stories. And finally, also involving young people at the very end in terms of evaluation, so on top, um, the paper there was a process where we actually involved a group of the authors who worked, uh, sorry, who submitted pieces to the It's Okay to Talk website, and they learned a little bit about qualitative analysis and worked with us on creating the coding tree, on coding the data, and sort of finalizing a manuscript for publication. 
And finally, just to conclude um, with, I think, a few of the many, many challenges in working uh, in digital interventions for mental health is to just say that as technology continues to become much more prominent in the lives of young people as well as in mental health, uh, there are a few areas that need uh, urgent attention. The first is around just inadequate evidence, both for clinical effectiveness as well as cost effectiveness of these kinds of interventions, that there are still very real gaps in access uh, as well as digital literacy. So for example, for young people living in poverty, for young people who might be marginalized, for women and girls, uh, for youth living in rural areas, and that there are still very, very limited uh, policies and regulatory frameworks, things like safety, confidentiality, privacy are still not being looked at closely enough, and there aren't really frameworks uh, to guide the design and development of these kinds of interventions. On the right there is a paper, um, happy to share the link, uh, that has really mapped out uh, some of the key research priorities for digital technology uh, in mental health, and I would really encourage you to have a look uh, at that. Uh, so I'll end here and uh, look forward to everyone's questions. Uh, thank you.